So yesterday we were looking at the law of demand and, and I, I started with the idea of where do prices come from, right? And why are we, we're sovereign from price because we're in a free market. In a command market, they tell you how much things are gonna cost, the government. But in a free market, producers and consumers act invisibly with each other, but yet prices are set for products like dun, 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 this lightsaber, right, from yesterday. So on the board, on the board, I have uh, a, and you uh, just wave at me. Uh, uh, Michelle, can you see the schedule on the table? Do wave at me. Sorry, you're a little square. Okay, awesome. Okay, good. So what I want to look at today, though, well, let me back up. Hold on. Sorry, it's the law. So yesterday you knew the law of demand. The law of demand says there's three things that have to be present for demand to exist, right? Desire, willingness, and ability. So, and I used this example with you yesterday, the million-dollar house. You might desire to live in a million-dollar house. You might be willing to pay for a million dollar house, but do you have the ability? No, so that's going to be demand is going to be zero for that house because you don't meet all three factors for demand to exist. You also learned yesterday, and you know this, that the law of demand, as prices go up for the product, your demand is going to go down, right? You're not going to want to pay more at a higher price. All right, or buy more of the product. All right, your demand's not going to go up for the product as price goes up. Your demand will go up for the product if the price goes down. That's the law of demand. Therefore, on your screen, that's why you have a downward sloping demand curve, right? And we can see it in our chart, and we can see it in our curve. Today, we're going to look at the six reasons. There are more, but there are six big reasons why demand would shift for a product. Why would the curve move? Okay. And so that's what we're going to look at today. Let's take a look. Now go to your, uh, your document from yesterday. We're going to quickly go through these. These are super simple. Okay. Super simple. Six factors or reasons why demand might change for a product. Changes in the number of consumers. More people interested or around to buy equals man up, vice versa. If the population booms, then demand is going to obviously go up. The population of the town or the city goes down, then the products around that town and city are obviously going to go down. Real life example. This lightsaber at Disney World, remember from yesterday? Lightsaber at Disney World from yesterday? Disney World is at 35% capacity right now, meaning the number of people that they can hold is down by 65%. So what has happened to all products, not just this lightsaber at Disney World? Gone down. There's less people going walking through the parks, right? Bada bing, bada boom. So, well, we won't get there yet. I'll talk about price on Tuesday. All right. So simple. Let's go to the next one. Consumer expectations. What? you predict for the product. Is it good, bad, great? What about the future? So your expectation about this lightsaber are you going to get a lot of utility out of it? Remember utility from yesterday, satisfaction, usefulness. Is that your expectation? Is your expectation that it's going to break? Because if your expectation is going to break, 
then obviously you're not going to spend a hundred dollars for one. And then also talk about when we talk about expectations, we're also talking about not the present, but also the future. What do you expect in the future for this lightsaber? Income. The next one, income, consumer income. More money equals more ability. Obviously, right? If you get a raise at your job and then you go to Disney World, you're going to have more money in your pocket. If I gave my daughter $20 a month instead of $10 a month for allowance, she's going to have more money. She's going to have more ability to purchase this, right? So her demand would naturally go up. Vice versa. Maybe she did something really bad and I cut her allowance. Or you lose your job. Less money, less demand for products. Simple stuff, right? And then this one here, a substitute. Competing products. Competing products. Well, this is the lightsaber, right? Competing product. Oh, but guess what? My daughter also loves, my daughter also loves Indiana Jones. Her favorite actor is Harrison Ford. I think she has a thing for older guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right. She saw Harrison Ford recently and she's like, that's not him. I was like, yeah, he's, he's old now. And she didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> But this would be a competing product, right? So if, if, this, if this was on the shelf right beside this, then the demand for this lightsaber, the desire to buy this lightsaber is going to go down just a little bit, right? Okay. And so that would be reflected in these curves. And then the last... The last two... Changes in consumer taste. We're talking about popularity here. We're talking about fads. Out of style. These are the things we're looking at. It's become really cool to be retro right now. Like I see a lot of kids wearing like old school shirts about like Nintendo and things that they, you know, never really probably even experienced. But the taste of consumers is a big part. If it becomes popular, demand will go up. If it becomes out of style, it'll go down. You don't want to be that guy, right? And then compliments. Compliments are products that help drive the sell of the original product you're looking at. Products that help drive the sell of the original product you're looking at. That would be a compliment. The exact opposite of a substitute. Indiana Jones, substitute. Compliment. Buy a lightsaber. Get a mini figurine set for free. This would complement each other. You can play, and then you can also play with these mini figurines. Or another compliment. Buy the lightsaber. Get a lunchbox. All right, these would complement each other. These are your subs. This would be the substitute, though. Okay. All right. So if the if the substitute, if the Indiana Jones is better than the lightsaber, then that's going to hurt sales for the lightsaber, right? Okay. I'm going to show you. You're gonna you're gonna take a look at that right here. Okay. All right. So now what you're gonna do. 
Let's go back to this. Don't you don't have to write anything. Just watch this really quickly, okay? So I'm gonna pick one. I'm gonna pick changes in uh, substitute. I'm gonna say this new product, Indiana Jones. Dun, 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 dun. Indiana Jones figurines all right, is going to be the substitute. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the lightsabers knowing that the next ride you go on in the gift shop you're going to pop out at is Indiana Jones. Dun, 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 dun. How will that affect demand for the lightsaber? Here we go. Well, my ability, desire, and willingness at $100 was to buy one. But if I only have $100 and I want to also buy this, then I probably will not buy any lightsaber. My ability, desire, and willingness is also going to go down at the $75 price point. So maybe I'll buy one there. I'm like, oh, $50. Okay, I'll buy one for you and me my little brother. And then maybe at $25, you only buy three of them. The whole neighborhood can't play, but you, your brother, and your dad can play out in the yard, and I could still maybe get this substitute product, okay? You see how that affected? Did the lightsaber price change? Prices are neutral. They don't change. Consumer behavior changes, okay? So that, and that is shown in the graph. A couple of things. Pay attention to this, okay? On Wednesday, I'm going to make sure that you do this. So really pay attention to the words that are coming out of my mouth. Number one, you've got to label everything. you got to label price. you got to label your quantity. Remember, shoe PQ, all right? You have to put your dollar signs on these things. you got to label D1 and D2 curves, all right? And remember to go up the ski lift. So we're gonna we're gonna curve this out. Up 100, out to zero, up to 75, out to one, up to 50, out to two, up to 25, out to three. This is the dot closest to price, right? So I'm gonna put my pen or pencil there. And when we connect, we're going down. That's the main curve D2. Which way did the demand curve shift? Did it go left or did it go right? Good. It went left, the people in my class said. And that means that it decreased. Demand decreased. We can see that in our D2. We can see it in our curve, but we can also easily see it right there in our table. And you instinctively know it too, right? You instinctively know this. Okay? So now what you're going to do, now that you're, now I'm going to give you these scenarios. Check this out. I've given you a scenario for each one, and I've given you some information, and I want you to use the original information to track and to tell me, is demand going to go up or down? Look at the first one on your paper. Decrease the number of consumers for Pokemon. The number of consumers has decreased. Pokemon used to be really, really big about 10 years ago. It's still big, but it's not as big as it was, right? So there's not as many consumers for Pokemon. So at these prices, is Pokemon going to go up in demand or down in demand? Very good. I see a lot of down. down. So at zero, we're going to go zero. At one, you know, maybe zero. Or you could keep it at one. That would be appropriate. That'd be okay. All right. Or maybe even just a half. You could go a half there. Instead of two packs, maybe you only have one. And instead of four packs, maybe you have two or three. Okay. That's how you like that's how you do this. And then you're going to chart it out. And then you're going to answer these three questions. Which way did the demand curve shift? What was it? Was this an increase or a decrease? 
and then describe, look at that word, describe how the number of consumers affected the demand. Talk to me, like tell me, well, this is what happened and that's why demand dropped, okay? All right, if you wanna stick around and do these and then like share them with me, you can. Obviously, if you feel comfortable, you can bounce um, and I will see you Monday. For the chart, instead of doing it on the computer, can I draw it out on a piece of paper and then insert a picture?